Hey YouTube friends, I recently got a question here in the clinic from a brand new patient that came in. They asked, do I have sciatica or do I have piriformis syndrome? This person was researching online, they were Googling, YouTubing different videos, trying to figure out what they had. Was it more of a sciatica problem or a piriformis problem? Because they wanted to figure out how to treat it and who to see for that problem. Hey, real quick, my name is Dr. David Minoff. I'm a specialist physical therapist over at El Paso Manual Physical Therapy. I treat sciatica problems all the time and I often see piriformis syndrome too. So I know how to tell the, the difference between the two and how to treat them both independently or together as you'll find out so that the problem goes away and people get back to being active and healthy and mobile while avoiding injections and medications and of course avoiding surgeries if, if that's something that might be a, a potential solution for this problem. So first off, let's define the two just to get some clear cut borders on what is sciatica and what is piriformis syndrome. So let's start with piriformis syndrome. Piriformis syndrome refers to the piriformis muscle, which is a muscle deep in the butt cheek area. If you pull up a picture on Google of the piriformis muscle, you'll find that right around it, above and below it, there's a bunch of other muscles. And real quick, I'll rattle them off for you. There's gemellus inferior, gemellus superior, obturator internus, obturator externus, quadratus femoris, gluteus maximus, gluteus minimus, gluteus medius, plus all the pelvic floor muscles nearby, and then of course the piriformis muscle. The reason why there isn't a, a gluteus medius syndrome or a obturator, obturator externus syndrome is because the piriformis just gets a bad rap. They, the, the piriformis gets blamed for a lot of pain in the butt area because of its position. It is directly over the sciatic nerve. So when people have pain in that area, then they start to blame the pressure of the piriformis muscle pushing onto the sciatic nerve. That's why these two are kind of related and it's hard to tell them apart. But let me give you two quick signs that you can check on yourself to see if it's more piriformis syndrome that you've got. Number one, pain deep in the butt area. If you can kind of poke into the butt cheek and on the side that bothers you and find a kind of a knot or a, a nodule, a hard spot in there that is tender, it's very likely that piriformis muscle. The piriformis muscle can become stiff and spasm, and, and sometimes it literally just needs to be rubbed out kind of gently to make sure that it calms down and it, it gets alleviated. The second sign is hip stiffness. The function of the piriformis muscle is to rotate the hip outwards. It also stabilizes the ball into the socket of the hip joint. So if you have stiffness, when you first go to get up or if you're trying to just move your leg around, say in bed or sitting in a chair or driving, and you feel like your, your hip that on the side that it hurts just doesn't move as good as your other hip, then that's a sign that you might have a piriformis syndrome problem as well. Now, some people might have hip arthritis and that stiffness may, they may also experience hip stiffness as well. The difference between the two there is the piriformis muscle stiffness tends to free up a lot quicker than an arthritis stiffness. So if you kind of begin to move around, walk around, stretch your hip out a little bit, and then it, it frees up, it feels better, it's very likely that you've got piriformis syndrome. If you're gonna go look into hip arthritis, then you wanna get an X-ray and see, if, uh, see how the hip joint looks and have a doctor interpret it for you so that you can know that it's more of a hip arthritis problem. Now let's talk about sciatica. Sciatica refers to the sciatic nerve. It's irritation or pain in the sciatic nerve. Now, the sciatic nerve comes out of the hip on the backside in the butt area and it travels down the thigh, down into the back of the knee. It's down the back of the thigh, down into the back of the knee, into the lower leg, like calf area, and then it branches in a bunch of different directions and it actually ends up going into the bottom of the foot all the way to the tips of the toes on the bottom side of the foot. This nerve, when it gets irritated, when, it's, when you have sciatica, it can also cause pain in the butt area, but it will typically radiate down into the back of the thigh. And you'll get more than just pain. You'll also get potentially numbness and tingling problems, burning sensations, aching sensations, and in more severe cases of sciatica, 
People will feel cramping in their hamstring area, um, in the calf area, even in the foot and like in the arc of the foot, and even heel pain. It could set off plantar fasciitis type symptoms too. The second sign that you've got a sciatica problem is if you begin to get the symptoms whenever you're standing or walking too long. Too long is relative to the individual, so it depends on, on you. If, if For some people, it, it happens right away. As soon as they stand up and walk around a bit, they're getting their symptoms within a minute. Other people can tolerate 30 minutes to 60 minutes or more, and then they begin to get the leg pain, the, the back of the thigh pain, the, the butt pain. It may go down all the way into their calf and, and foot. They may even get that cramping as well. And so there you go. You've got a clear differentiation of what piriformis syndrome is and what sciatica is and a few signs to tell the two apart. But here's the thing, here's what's important for you to take away from this because there's not a whole lot of treatment you can do from with the information that they're giving you. And the reality is both happen at the same time most of the time. Probably about 70-80% of the cases that I've seen, if I just give a rough estimate, have sim symptoms of sciatica and symptoms of piriformis syndrome happening together simultaneously. And the reason for that is because the root problems of sciatica and of piriformis syndrome are the same. So I'm gonna cover with you next the three same root problems of these two syndromes, the, the piriformis syndrome and the sciatica problem. So the first most common root problem is a muscle imbalance, meaning the muscles on one side of the body, usually on the front of the body, are a lot stronger than the muscles on the back side of the body. And when that happens, it causes the, the hip joints, the lower back joints, even the knee joints to be out of balance. There's excessive pressure. There's too much pressure on one side of the joints because of the muscles being stronger on that side. And it's forcing the tissues on the other side, the, the muscles, the nerves, ligaments, um, all that stuff back there to move inappropriately. When this happens too much over time, tissues get irritated. Certain muscles might spasm like the piriformis. The sciatica, the sciatic nerve might get irritated. So you've got to look at that muscle imbalance. The second most common root cause is pelvis bones are either stuck or moving too much. So the pelvis bones, the ones that make up your, your hips, one might be shifted one way or, or another, and it could be putting some tension on the piriformis muscle because the piriformis muscle is connected to the back of the tip, the front side of the tailbone, and then it goes out, crosses the hip joint, and attaches to the femur, the thigh bone, but it's in the pelvis area. So if the pelvis bone is shifted, it's gonna put some different stress and strain on that piriformis muscle and can cause it to want to spasm. By the same, positional change, if that pelvis bone moves, it can compress the opening for the sciatic nerve where it comes out of the pelvis bone to go down the leg, and it can also cause a sciatic symptom. So the pelvic rotation could be causing both symptoms, the, the piriformis syndrome, pain, the, the discomfort from the muscle spasming, as well as the nerve itself uh, getting compressed and irritated. The third most common root cause of these two symptoms, of these two problems, is lower back issues, to put it simply, low lumbar problems. So you're talking about disc problems like disc herniations, um, uh, arthritis in the lower back, stenosis is another very common one, which is closing of the nerve openings. They're, they're getting more narrow, and that can be causing nerve compression that causes the piriformis muscle to spasm, or that irritates the sciatic nerve as it goes down the leg as well. So those root symptoms need to be addressed in order to fix both the piriformis syndrome and the sciatica problem. If we just treat the symptoms of the piriformis syndrome or the symptoms of the sciatica problem but not the root causes, well, it's gonna keep coming back. That's why people don't ever get rid of this. In some cases, it becomes chronic and they don't really understand how to maintain muscle strength or the, the joint stability or the joint mobility as well, the, 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 the motion of the joints, so that the, this problem isn't recurring every month or every few months. So these root problems need to be addressed. Now since you're on YouTube right now, you can find lots of free videos that we've made on YouTube here. If you go to our, our YouTube homepage, 
find the playlist that is all about sciatica. If you look through that playlist, you'll find tons of helpful videos on exercises and stretches and what to do and what not to do when it comes to sciatica. Home remedies are there as well. All kinds of things that you can try on your own at home for sciatica. You can also go to our website at epmanualpt.com or look in the description here in the, in the, at the bottom of this video to get there as well. And you can get access to a free tips guide that you can download uh, through your email. So you just leave us your details and you will send it to your email directly. Just check your spam folder in case you don't see it within a minute or so. Now my number one recommendation though is that you get specialist expert help for your sciatica and or piriformis syndrome problem. Get with a manual therapist. That's my biased opinion is go see a manual physical therapist who knows how to handle sciatica problems and pelvis problems at the root level. They know how to free up those lower back joints. They know how to mess with the pelvis joints to make sure that it's the way it's supposed to be. And they'll be able to guide you very well on how to correct the muscle imbalances so that this problem isn't coming back so that you can avoid ever seeing a surgeon, avoid injections and medications, and remain active and healthy and mobile in your body. That by far is the quickest route to getting healthy again, so that you're able to stand as long as you want, walk as long as you want, sit as long as you want. Oh my gosh, can't tell you how many piriformis and sciatica patients come in and say, they took a long drive, you know, they, they took a little road trip and it was just killing them. They were miserable, they had to pull over at a gas station and buy some pain medication because it just was so uncomfortable to sit in the car for that long. Their sciatica was going off and they're having to try to figure out how to do some exercises in the car and it's just, it's just a miserable situation. So I, I don't want you to end up like that. Get this problem fixed as fast as possible. If you can get to a manual therapist in your area, if you, if you want to consider coming out to us, um, you can do that as well. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I hope that it was helpful for you. If you found that it was helpful or, and you know some friend or family member uh, that, that needs to hear this information that might be suffering from piriformis syndrome or sciatica problems, please share this video with them. Hit the share button right around here or just copy the link and send it to them, you know, text, Facebook, Messenger, whatever, whatever mode of communication you prefer so that they can get the help that they need on knowing the difference between a piriformis problem and a sciatica problem and what the root problems for the two are so they're not dealing with this for longer than they need to be. If you thought this was helpful, hit the like button right there and then also hit the subscribe button so that you can get notified whenever we release new information for your health so that you can have better health, you can make better so that you can make better decisions about your own health. Thanks so much for watching guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.